is the best way to define what is and what is not part of the project. Still, the project lives in an uncertain environment and we are sure things will change through the execution. But why and how? Let's start with a simple example. When we start a project at the beginning, we normally have a good idea of the final output we should achieve. Let's say we want to renovate the kitchen and we have a first design done with the interior designer. It's common knowledge that during the project we will find ourselves doing something different, maybe something bigger, like renovating the entire first floor and even replacing the furniture of the living room. Why is this happening? Why is the scope growing along the time? There are at least two main reasons why this happens. The first one is called scope creep and the second scope goal plating. Scope creep is when the customer is trying to make us do more work, asking for more functionalities, more performance, without giving us more time or money. The customer, usually, does not have the skills and the capabilities to do the project, which means that often understand what he or she really wants during the project itself. In the previous example, the customer at the beginning may even want to renovate only the kitchen, but sooner or later, he or she would realize that a new area in an open space would not fit the others. And so he or she would start adding new pieces to the project. Normally, if a customer asks for a big change in the scope of the project, it is possible to ask for more money and more time. Still, it often happens in a slightly different way. The customer may ask for small changes over time. Every change is a very small change if compared with the whole project. So we accept it without revising the time or the budget goals. This is the scope creep. Many small changes required over time. What can we do in order to contrast the scope creep? Well, the first thing is to define very well the scope of the project, for example, through the scope statement. Once the scope is well defined, we will be able to negotiate with the customer on the basis of a clear differences between what was defined in the scope statement and what we are being asked to do. This doesn't mean that we are not going to welcome the change request, but that we may probably accept a certain amount of scope creep at the beginning, since the changes are too small if compared with the whole project, and we do not renegotiate the contract. Still, at a certain point, we are entitled to notify these changes to the customer, showing how requests were out of scope, that we accepted them, and that now we should renegotiate time and budget to make it coherent with the new scope. Still, the customer is not the only reason why scope changes. It's curious to see that there is at least another reason why the scope can grow, and it is not originated by the customer but it's originated by the project team itself. It is called scope gold plating. This is usually due to the specific way certain professional figures approach their job. People working in disciplines like engineering or design typically try to execute assigned tasks in the best possible way, from their own point of view. The point is that what is better for them might not be the best solution from the managerial point of view or according to what the customer asked. From a purely technical point of view, the goal is usually to improve the product through efficiency, reliability, performance, and so on. But if I cannot sell this to the customer because the customer is asking for something less at this point, probably I spent more and I'm not able to increase revenues, so I'm reducing the margin of my project. In other words, I'm literally gold plating, therefore increasing the value, something that is not valuable for the customer, and therefore reducing the margin from a project management perspective. How can I control scope gold plating? Well, the only way is to define very well the scope and then to create an assessment process in order to check and control if the technical departments are really doing what they need to do or they are overperforming. So we have two different dynamics, scope creep and scope goal plating, but in both cases we can contrast them by defining very well the scope. These two drivers, the scope creep and scope goal plating, requires the project managers 
to closely monitor the scope evolution during the project execution to actually manage it. And, if necessary, go back to the customer and renegotiate time and cost, rebalancing the iron triangle to the new scope. Thank <laughs> you.